I'd just like to start quickly by just thanking our sponsors, um, Lennons of the Week, Amano, Georgetown Cupcake, Prairie Capital, the loyal friends of Georgetown, Rachel Pearson Associates, and anybody else who wants to be a sponsor, we'd love to have you. And uh, I'm especially happy to welcome the Bradley Quinn family, the Quinn Bradley family, any way you want to put it together. We've got Ben Bradley, Quinn Bradley, and Sally Quinn. And, um, and we're going to talk about your book, A Different Life. And I don't usually just start with the book like this, but I was very interested reading your blog these last few days. And, um, and you've been on the book circuit for a while. Yeah, I have. And uh, that's something else, isn't it? It's been pretty busy, but I like I, it. I was very taken by something you said where you were yearning for isolation. Yes, it's, uh, I never realized um, going on a, I don't think most people realize what they're getting themselves into when they write a book. <laughs> I certainly didn't. And I kind of wanted to. And your parents didn't clue you in? A little bit, but not a whole lot. But I, I've been on the weekends, I've sort of been hibernating mm -hmm. <laughs> in my, my little cave at home. And I just, uh, you know, for a couple of weeks, and I think this happens to everybody after you do something like this, you just, you don't really want to be around people, people. For, for the next, you know, two weeks or so. <laughs> but, but no matter it's, how much I today. love people. Except today. Yeah, well, today you're definitely around yeah. people or, or they're around you. Um, well, I mean, we should probably start at the beginning, which really starts with the two of you, uh, because this is a special day, right? This yeah. is your birthday. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Does not go unnoticed here at the Q&A Cafe. So that makes it, I mean, there's, there's no mother who doesn't remember that. I've always felt birthdays are as much for us as, uh, as our children, but, uh, and the dads too. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but the moms are paying. Uh, but why don't the three of you, or especially the two of you, take us back to that day, what, 27 years ago? 27 years 27 ago. Years ago. Wow. You can choose the parent you'd like to hand the mic to. Uh, do you want to start, Dad? No. <laughs> Uh, well, well, I mean, I, there's not much to tell except that uh, I had uh, I was quite old when uh, when Quinn was born. I was over sixty, and um, it was quite stunning to have uh, a little squirmy baby boy again after all those years. Mm -hmm. And um, in every way, a perfectly normal baby. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely so. And um, well, except he had a hole in his heart. Did you know that immediately? I mean, that yeah. wasn't the... Three months after he was born, he went to Children's Hospital. Right, and they but, took but a, that first day, that first few weeks, it was just the happiest days of your life. Well, yeah, except he was silent. He was a totally silent child, as I remember him. He didn't... He went into the hospital, and all of... Every other little... Baby was baby crying. Baby was crying, and Quinn was... Said a gloom and looking at you like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why don't you hand Sally the mic? Yeah, and she's better at it. Well, <laughs> you're all there. Very well, gentle. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. not a competition. It, it was a more momentous event for me than <laughs> already had three children, grown children. Exactly. Uh, and um, it was my first child, and it was I was three weeks late, and it was the happiest, happiest. day of my entire life. So and if you actually wanted a girl. I started. Well, <laughs> well, you solved that. Didn't I you? came out. I ruined everything. <laughs> well, I knew. I, I actually, I told Quinn that I, one, one of the reasons I wanted a girl was to have somebody to hang out with on the weekends because Ben was always watching <laughs> football, and if I had a daughter, then I'd have somebody to hang out with. Right, right. But then what happened was that Ben and Quinn started watching football, and I got to have the weekend to myself. So it turned out much better. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, he he was born. Um, he was gorgeous, and um, obviously, uh, and when Ben says silent, actually, what uh, that was a good thing because all the nurses uh, called him Mr. Mellow in the mm -hmm. hospital because he was he would just sit there with his wide eyes looking around and all the other babies mm -hmm. were screaming their lungs out, mm -hmm. and um, and he was a fabulous baby. But uh, with the second day, his pediatrician found a hole in his heart. And um, we went immediately to Children's Hospital, and we were told that he had a heart defect, but that oftentimes it would close up. And as it turned out, a month later he went into um, heart 
failure. Mm -hmm. And so we were then in Children's Hospital for three months. They, they were trying to build him up his strength because they didn't think that he would survive a surgery mm -hmm. um, because the hole was so large. So it, we, we were there for three months and then <coughs> we did open heart surgery. Was he living at the hospital? He, all this he time? lived, well, yes. He and I both lived at the hospital for three months. That's an enormous trauma. It was unbelievable. Yeah. You know? And I would come home to um, change mm -hmm. uh, my clothes, and Ben would come over after work. Ben actually was in a trial. The Washington Post was being sued by this man named Tabula Reyes, and the, um, the we trial won. went on <laughs> from the day Quinn had opened, day from the day he went into failure, heart failure, right. until the day he had surgery. Ben had to be at the courthouse all day, every day, and then he would come to the, the, the and hospital. And then when you and when he wasn't at the hospital and being and being in the court, he was still running the Washington Post. Right, he was so exactly, sort of. yeah, sort of. the Washington yeah. It was a, a, a very stressful time. Stressful and time. the day that Quinn had heart surgery was the day that the Post was found guilty <laughs> in the trial. They later <laughs> appealed it and won, but it was not a great day. Um, but then he started developing all of these problems. But you, but did you think after the heart surgery that? Uh, that was and it. Don't worry, we're we're talking about you, and you're going to be talking soon enough. But uh, but you thought this is this yeah. happens, and this is it. And that was it. And yeah. then suddenly all these other things started, started. happening. And mm -hmm. he, you know, he he was sick. He he nearly died a lot a number of times. You know, from pneumonia. And everything's treated individually right. without and anybody. He yes, and stitching he was, it together. It was all yeah. He had developmental problems, and then he had epilepsy, and was having these horrible seizures, and then yeah. he couldn't speak properly, <laughs> and it went on. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the part about how this is difficult on marriages. Oh, we will <laughs> absolutely. No, I, I know that, but it's but I but I. What yeah. I want to do, <laughs> and, and how husbands go into denial, <laughs> the well, more hysterical the mother gets. Well, um, uh, that's, that's give, all right. Back yeah. to back to. Back I to have Quinn. a question. Okay. I have a question Please. for you, Quinn, because um, here you have your father, and you and one of the really interesting things for me about the book, and I don't know, you say your parents did not read it before it was published. True. 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 So um, I was I was quite taken with the amount of candor that's in there about your life, their lives, how you feel about them. I mean, you, you, he's basically writing your obituary in part of it. <laughs> well, you would agree. Uh, well. <laughs> but the, what, what I came away with, and what must be interesting for people interviewing you, is that you you know here you paint your father as this hugely intimidating character in his own way, somebody you idolize. And your mother is the mama cat to end all mama cats. She is <laughs> She's the She's a lioness. That's how <laughs> She's going to protect you no matter what. Huh? Um, since the book has come out, since you wrote it, has the family dynamic changed in any way? Um, actually, not too much. <laughs> really? But you've got, but your voice is much more in there now, don't well, you? Well, it, it obviously has, um, but I, in a lot of ways, there's still, it's still, the same as it was, you know, some things have changed. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, I can't really, there's something in the air that has changed. And I don't know exactly what it is, but you can feel it. It's, it's something that you can't really pinpoint. You um, feel inside yourself. Yeah, I do. Does I do, it feel I like feel a that, confidence? The confidence, I can feel there's some kind of energy that I can feel around this family that has changed. Right. You, and I you think it will never be the same as it was before I wrote the book because, you know, they said I'd never be able to, you know, graduate high school, go to college, have any friends. The doctor said that. Not the doctor. Yeah. Not, not the but you feel, like you, you, you feel like an equal to your parents more, perhaps. Um, it's, it's always been, I've always felt not pressured by them that I'd ever live up Not to their expectations. Um, but at the same time, it's, I tell people, sometimes people ask me, is it hard coming from the family that you come from? Because it's not just them, it's, you know, my grandfather and right. so on. Lots of hard um, work. Yeah. And, uh, and lots and of success. Her father was a retired three-star general right. who went to West Point. Lots of power. And, and uh, it's, it's great. Uh, it's hard because some people think that I. It's hard for me because I have to live up to that expectation. But it's great because I can. I'm lucky enough to have to be able to get the resources mm -hmm. that I need to help me proceed in life. Um, I want to go back to your parents then again because I want to go back to a moment in the book that I personally just found very traumatic. 
was you're at the lab school and you still don't know what's wrong. You know something's wrong, but you don't know what it is. And I guess it was a phone call you got from a therapist who said that your son is retarded. Well, There's I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, you can hand the mic here. to your mom. Yeah, no, what, what happened was that we had been, he'd been seeing a therapist and, um, and she tested him mm -hmm. and she called us in to t uh, tell us the results of the test and she said that he's essentially retarded. And he was at the lab. Was that the first the time. time the word had been yeah. used? And that he, she had actually made, a, a, a reserved a place for him at um, a, a, an institution mm -hmm. called Ivy Mount. And that she said he will never go to high school, he will never have a job, he will never have friends, he will never have a relationship, he essentially will not have a life. Mm -hmm. And um, Quinn was about eight then. Right. And ben literally had to carry me out of there. I mean, I didn't stop crying for about three days. But I did call the lab school. Marty Cathcart is here from the lab school. Mm -hmm. um, and I called and talked to them and Sally Smith, and they, they were outraged because no because one... Because this was news to them. This was news to right. them. I mean, Quinn wasn't exactly the star of his class, but, but this woman just said, you know, I've done it's the over. testing, and th it's, over. it's over. And he will not have a life. And then I got really angry. And I just looked at him and I thought, I, this is this magical person who mm -hmm. is so smart and got such a great sense of humor and so talented and he's got so many things going for him. I, I'm not going to accept this. I will not believe this. And it sort of reinforced my idea of just sort of putting everything I had into Quinn. Do you remember any of this? No. To be honest with you, no. I, I, was, I got a message on friendsofquinn.com uh, from uh, a... Um, person, I guess he was sort of like a speech therapist, mm -hmm. and he uh, worked on me when I was two years old and hadn't seen me since I was two, and saw an uh, article about me in Newsweek and wrote in, and I just think it's one of the most amazing feelings to see these doctors who worked on you when you were two and they haven't seen you since. And didn't know. And they didn't, didn't know, know yeah. Was. And, you know, but the, now... You'd like to believe that he was telling me, you know, you were always striving and always such a, an adventurous little child. But there's always a little part of you saying, "Is he, are they saying that now because I've come out with a book and I have my own or, or right. a website, Friends of Quinn. Are they saying com. it to flatter you? Yeah, or do they really mean it? I have a feeling they probably really mean it, but sure. You know, yeah. I'd like to follow up on one yeah. thing that you said. Um, you were asking Quinn about the honesty in his about book, Jeff, who's here. right? And and uh, how he was so honest. And um, a lot of people have asked him about that because he really lays it out, and it's he does. painfully truth, painfully truthful. Mm -hmm. um, and Carol had asked you about that earlier. But why did you do that, Quinn? Why were you so honest? Why did you reveal so many family? About your mom. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I've, I've always been. Well, actually, your father said yeah. the same thing, because I, I remember your father in one of his little vignettes is saying, you just don't mess with Sally Quinn. You just don't do it. You just don't go there. So, oh, I've so always been one of my little vignettes. <laughs> one of your big vignettes? <laughs> well, I, yes. I've always been honest, um, and according to them, I've never told a lie to them. Well. Um, and I kind of teased him, maybe I can run for president. Uh, yeah, no, you don't want to no, do you can't. And why, why would you want no, to? No. But um, let, me, let me then, I want to just move it just ahead a little bit because, because you've, you've had this awful uh, uh, bit of news from a therapist who you don't uh, agree with. And she says that it's retardation and that it's over. But and maybe you'll remember this day. I'm sure all three of you do. When you go to see Dr. Sprinson. Sprint, oh, thank you yeah. for pronouncing yeah. it for me, because that was a very important day in all your lives. I'd love to have each of your recollections of that day. Well, in the first place, yeah. he plainly wasn't retarded. Well, well, I mean, that's he, had, what, he had all sorts of difficulties. Yeah. But you know, being retarded is something else, and it's quite recognizable. I so think. you got angry? Yeah, I did. And what did you do with your anger? Took it out of my mom. <laughs> this place is stacked against me. No, but, but you were angry and you knew it wasn't true. Yeah. But it still was quite a while before you had an answer. Yeah, before we knew exactly what, what it was. What it was. Yeah. That's, so it, it's like even and though you knew he wasn't retarded, 
it's not like it got easier. You were still facing no, a great no, unknown. No, I didn't say that. Yeah. But I, but it, but it, uh, uh, I didn't want to live with something that I didn't think was true. Right. So, you did not go to an institution. You stayed in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, but 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 please tell us what happened. We spent the first two years of school in the lap of the most beautiful teacher I ever saw in my life. And I said, I stopped worrying about him then. Nah. <laughs> Skid gets an education where he wants to. Um, Remember her? But, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I don't remember her that much. <laughs> because she wasn't a problem, you didn't have to fight her. So you're 13 or 14 years old and you go to see Dr. Princeton. And what happens? Um, well, I was 14 mm -hmm. years old uh, and he, I walked in there and at the time he had seen about 2,000 patients. And I walked in there and said, yep, you have VCFS. You just he pointed at me. At you. Were I you think, both in the room when this happened? I, I think after you see about 2,000 patients, you can kind of point, start pointing fingers at people uh, who have it. But, you know, a lot of people take it so hard. And they kind of, they, when they learn that their child has this, it's almost they take it as if their child has cancer and they don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, they think it's the end of the world, you know, nothing's going to be, you know, happen. It was sort of a beginning for you, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it was uh, the beginning of the beginning. Well, pronounce um, it correctly since I didn't know. It's velofacial cardio syndrome. VCFS, velocardio facial yeah. syndrome. Yeah. Um, what, what is it in a few short sentences? Is um, it is a deletion of 22, of the 22 chromosome. Mm -hmm. um, it's a genetic it's defect. It's a genetic defect. And a lot of it is uh, hereditary, mm -hmm. but mine was just a fluke. Random. Um, yeah, and uh, it's, you know, you, you kind of question some people might ask, you know, why did I get this? And I've only asked that once, and I was really depressed at the time. Um, but, you know, if you think about it, everybody has uh, problems, and everybody has... So, Quinn, after the uh, sort of euphoria of find, f knowing what it was, yeah. you, you, still, you still faced a pretty big depression then of being, why me? Yeah, um, I think I was, I mean, last night I got a little upset because I, I ran out of, when I don't take my medicine, I do tend to get a little cranky. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm taking Effexor, which is an uh, antidepressant. Right. And I ran out on Sunday, so I couldn't take it yesterday because um, it was too late to go, you know, the, yeah. the pharmacy had closed. And uh, I was upset because I, and I've always kind of thought that it's unfair that you have to take a medicine to make you happy. But if you think about it, there's so many people that have so many more problems. And, you know, all you have to do is just think about, you know, people in Africa that are <laughs> being yeah. raped and murdered every day. And that shouldn't cheer you up a little bit. What if you didn't take any medication? What would happen? Um, I, tr I went off my medicine for a while, mm -hmm. and I was the first two days. My head just gets really, you know, my head goes in a thousand directions. So my head just constantly thinking all the time. Um, and so the first two days, I'm not crazy like a crazy person, but mm -hmm. my head is just spinning. You're agitated. And uh, so it's not a good feeling. But after mm -hmm. the first few days, it starts to calm down, and then you just kind of have a mild depression. You know, it's not mm -hmm. severe or anything, but you can recognize it. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I've always had a problem with motivation, and I hate going to the gym. Absolutely hate going to the gym. <laughs> Um, well, when you, when you felt suicidal, because you say there was a point when you actually wrote a note, yeah. were you on a medication then? I think I was on a medicine it's called Dexedrine. Adderall. 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 Um, I've taken so many medicines, I can't right, keep, keep up track with them, of all but, of them. I can imagine. But, uh, you know, after a while, I've kind of, I came up with a theory that after a while, if you're on a medicine, they can go bad on you, and you know you're, especially and especially people. you have, uh, you know, you go off a of medicine, and by the time you go on a new medicine, 
the old medicine is still a little bit inside of you, so I've always thought it kind of makes you more crazy. Um, but Well, I'd love to ask one of your parents, you can pick which one, what, what the aftermath was of the diagnosis and how that changed things. Did it? Well, first of all, we were enormously relieved to right. know that he, what it was, that there was a name for what he had, because as you said, there are 188 anomalies, and he had a lot of them. Right. You know, it was like every single day, it was whammo, we were getting st struck with something that mm -hmm. was just out of the blue. I mean, he had surgery four times on his throat, he had this palate created, I mean, he, it was just constant illness and and you just didn't know where to turn. You didn't yeah. know what was, what's going to happen next. And then when you look at the list, you say, well, these things are on the list, so the minute something would happen to him, we'd know. For instance, he's developed these terrible migraines where he would pass out mm -hmm. and sort of go into the, the sort of a coma almost. And we knew then right away that that, when that, that was part of the deal. We would yeah. take him to the hospital, get him on an IV, and get him, uh, you know, mm -hmm. regulated. Um, so that we didn't go in crazy and think that uh, the first time he had the migraine, we thought it was a brain tumor, and they were about to have a brain surgeon fly in from Texas to mm -hmm. operate on him. When we called Dr. Sprinson, he said, "No, it sounds like a migraine to me." And you know, and Wonderful so, to so I think it's, have it's Dr. that Sprinson yeah. in your life. So that that's been great, um, and th and that's made a huge difference, and it just sort of calmed us down because right. then we knew what to expect. So that you know, if he gets a hangnail, we would call Dr. Right. Sprinson. This is part of the deal. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah. right. uh, I imagine that he's on your speed dial, so to speak. Yeah. So. Well, uh, not so much anymore because Quinn has been really healthy, yeah. and we're knocking on wood. But yeah. um, as the older he gets, the healthier he gets, and the, and the more he talks mature. about his depression. How did you two? Did you have similar depressions of your own? Um, why us? Why me? I can't take this anymore. I, I'm sure there's patterns for well, parents there, too. there are two kinds of depression. One is you have the sick child. Mm -hmm. And I essentially gave up my career for about 16 years. I, I wrote a couple of novels, but I mean, I just I quit the post and stopped working. And I never ask why me because I look around the world, as Quinn said, and I mm -hmm. basically say why not me. You know, mm -hmm. and we have so many things to be thankful for that I didn't. I walked in children, Children's Hospital one day feeling really sorry for myself, and there was a little tiny boy shriveled up with a bald head in a wheelchair with an IV. I think I've lost my mind, I mean, with an IV, with mm -hmm. it being pushed with a nurse, and he was dying of cancer. And I just thought, you know, I, I get, every time I walk in children's hospital, I'm not allowed to feel sorry for mm -hmm. myself because there, there's so many children and people who are in worse condition. But um, yeah, I, and, and the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, is that for mothers and fathers, you know, there's a 50% more divorce in families with children with chronic diseases mm -hmm. and learning disabilities and special needs than there are in so why, ordinary families. So how did families. you two stay married? Well, it was hard at times um, <laughs> because what happens I'm not gonna is go to that. the mother, <laughs> the, the, and I'll pass the mic to Ben and let like, you hear his side of it. Go there. But what happens is that the mother is is totally into it and, and is the mother. Uh, the mother. And um, and I was, and I did say to Quinn after I read his book, because we didn't change a word of it except mm -hmm. for factual things, but I did say, I think it would have been nice if there had been qu not quite so many phrases like mom freaked out, mom was hysterical. <laughs> I, I think mean, not only did mom freak out, the dad called an ambulance right. for mom once when mom freaked out. <laughs> Ben was in the Navy, and there's an expression in the Navy, when the Japanese are bombing your destroyer and all hands on deck, it's called going to general quarters. Yes. And so, you know, every time Ben, something would happen to Quinn, Ben would say, there she goes, off to general quarters again. <laughs> you know, Sally's favorite like, expression. Wow. And fathers ha are much more likely to be in denial. And, um, well, and or so, in control. In control. Right. <laughs> we, have, we have different versions of it. He, and you know, in a way, it actually wasn't bad because if Ben had been like I was, it would have been a disaster. We would have both been hysterical. Oh, and, and that, if I had, that happens. I'm sure. I and if I had been the way parents. Ben was, nothing, you know, he would right. never have gone to the hospital because I mean, it was we, like we wouldn't be happening. sitting here. Yes, be that's book. right. So, uh, but, but the, the low point I think for us was when. Um, I got really depressed for about a week, and I had this I, white, dirty pants and a white, yellow, dirty T-shirt, and I hate yellow, and I wore it every day. I couldn't eat, and it got dirtier what, and dirtier. When was this? Oh, what this was when he was about eight or nine, and and I, I just oh, so I was, was so depressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I couldn't function. And it, my birthday was at the end of the week. <laughs> ben, knowing that I didn't like yellow, but obviously he saw me in that yellow shirt, sent me a dozen yellow roses. But I don't but get in, the point of that in, story. In, you think I did that on purpose? No, I think it was subliminal. But all I'm saying is <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that I think that his reaction was probably healthy because it kept us balanced. And now, Ben, it's your turn to tell well, your yes, side of the story. Yes, please give Ben the mic because I, I really there was a there was a moment where I thought, well, obviously, you deal with crisis with humor because what did you say to Sally? At what stage? I don't know. I guess it was with you got the diagnosis when you said, "Don't worry." Uh, what is it? Look at it this way. Now he doesn't have to go into the. War. He doesn't have to go to war. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that you need to speak in for TV. Well, uh, yeah, I did say that. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I, I uh, the way this uh, conversation is going, it sounds much <laughs> worse than I remember. I don't. It's I mean, okay. I, I remember. That that uh, we, um, I mean, it became obvious that uh, this child had a condition mm -hmm. that became part of our life, and it wasn't a bad part of our life. It was a part of our life. <coughs> Actually, it was a unifying life. part mm -hmm. of our life. And uh, I mean, you take a look at him now, and you have to you have, you have to, to really put him under a microscope to see. Uh, anything that's wrong with him. Mm -hmm. He's got a bump in his jaw that nobody can see and that's one of the, one of the uh, symptoms of uh, PCFS. Mm -hmm. PCFS. It's a little tiny bit, little bump that, that, that nobody sees except the parents. Does age resolve some of the issues? Well, uh, have you seen yeah, him? Have you maybe seen the him age, grow? Maybe my age resolves some yes. things. <laughs> maybe Sally's age resolves some But things. have you seen um, changes in him where oh, you feel issues changes. have been resolved yeah, he, by age. He looks pretty good to mm -hmm. me now. Mm -hmm. And he, I mean, he never looked bad, but uh, right. he seems uh, to, to be on top of, it, of his problem. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but you have a family motto that's very different from the way Sally dealt with things. What's my family motto? Well, yeah. let me see if I'm going to get it in the right order. Nose yeah. down, ass, ass up, up or what, 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 what is it? Right. it? What was it? It, it comes from ass down, nose up. <laughs> it says his father, father was uh, an all-American football player mm -hmm. at Harvard, and that's the position. And you know, before you yeah. nose you down, your ass up, and huh? keep going. And that worked for you. Yeah. That was how yeah, you got through it. It does work for me. Did Did you oh, have days? Um, oh, sorry, I was just, I was just, you know, you're going and you're running I this control. newspaper, and you're, you're, you're. You, there are many things you can control. Yeah. You have a lot of power in a town where power matters. Well, yeah. I can say that. There are also a lot of things you can't control, and you learn to live with that. And did this add a dimension to that that you might not have faced before? Well, I'm sure, but it's part of the cards you're dealt. Yeah. And and. Uh, uh, I think that to live with the, the, the cards you're dealt is, is automatic now, has become automatic, mm -hmm. and, and does become automatic. And I don't consider, I mean, I feel sometimes that I wish he'd had, had an easier time, but I don't wish that for myself a whole lot. I mean, Our, it didn't seem to me that I had a very hard time. Is it? Can it be tested? Um, uh, the, can it be tested in the, in the embryo, I mean, in the womb? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was that an option available? No, to no. You, you, you. you uh, what you, you do is you do in vitro, right? Um, uh, oh, that's, you know, what, and I, what I'm saying is that you, you do. I'm sorry, amnio, amnio. And you right. can test it or uh, so the CV test at six months, but right. you, you can't know beforehand. You can't know. No. So he would have like a fifty percent chance um, of passing it on, but you know you can find out right away mm -hmm. within six weeks of of pregnancy or. What he can do is uh, do in vitro fertilization, and then you can and then you can uh, see the embryo before it gets implanted. I want, I want to ask you a tough question. Um, you can marry. You yes. can you marry. You can have children. There's a 50 percent chance your child might have this. Mm -hmm. If you were to find out that your child, if your wife was pregnant and you found out the child had it, would you would you keep the baby or not? Um, I Knowing th what you know about the way your life has been. I hope the first thing you do is ask the, the woman involved. Well, both of them, yes. Obviously. But I meant his personal feelings being the one who has the syndrome. 
Well, that uh, it's a hard. Um, that is a hard question. Right. Well, uh, because you know now you. before if you know if um, <coughs> if you think about it before uh, you know you get I got my wife pregnant. Yeah. What you can do is you can have your sperm tested, yeah. uh, and you know if it's positive, and they can choose which one is, uh, you know, Medical see which one is, is positive amazing. or not. Yeah. So, uh, and that's obviously what I would do. Yeah. And so there's I'm lots of lots of possibility, <laughs> right? Lots of possibility. I might and be a little hope. slow, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> well, we've sort of we've sort of gone around the back way to get to sex. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> And since you write about this in the book, can we talk about sex? Sure. Um, there are some X-rated parts in the Because world. it's an interesting story about your mother, uh, about, the first, <laughs> about the first time you had sex. Wait, we're not talking about incest here. No, we're not talking about incest. We're talking about St. Martin, family holiday. Oh, God. Oh, well, it's in the book, Ben. <laughs> He's already crying. He's already crying. No, I'm not. I'm the light. He's laughing, um, but uh, but we don't need to go into all no, the we details. Don't. We don't. But you did have sex okay, for the first time, and then your mother was your mother what freaked you out. Um, it was. Uh, I hope you look back on that and laugh now. Oh, I do. Okay. Uh, and I tease my mother about it all the time. Because <laughs> I, I that was something I've kind of never forgiven her uh, for doing because she went back. To the place. Well, uh, you start out by saying what you did. <laughs> no. All right. Well, no, wait a minute. No, that, no, not that in detail. Okay. Not in detail. So, <laughs> it's in the book, Ben. Yeah, I know. It's in the book, Ben. Right. So um, I wake up one morning after the previous night I lost my virginity. Yeah, um, it has It's got to happen sometime. Okay. I was 19, and uh, I uh, said, you know, I'm at this place with my friend, and I had no idea. It took me a, a little while uh, to figure out where I was exactly. Yeah. And then I realized every guy had a girl on his lap, and then I was starting to figure out what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, uh, you know, after that night, I... I, um, you told your dad. I told my dad, mm -hmm. and he said, "Congratulations, son! <laughs> and, you know, it's terrific, <laughs> amazing. You're now it. a man." <laughs> and uh, I told my mom, and I thought she was um, general. <laughs> 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 uh, if, if you know, if that's so it was Defcon three in the uh, Bradley household. Wasn't yeah, it? she had a few cows that day. <laughs> <laughs> Now, but can I tell my side of the story? Of course. Yes. But, I guess. I don't know. I'm actually not done yet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, you'll read it in the book, so you it doesn't it matter. Book. But she made me and this uh, kid who I had invited down um, to go back to the place where I had lost my virginity and made everybody get a uh, HIV test. And it Maybe was, per performing a service for the community. It was <laughs> one of the most embarrassing moments in my life, and I've never. Well, really because it's not the it. kind of place men typically go back and visit the next morning. No, it's not. <laughs> with their mother. And the girls probably don't ever want to see you again either. Not with your mother. <laughs> Especially not with my mother. <laughs> Uh, it's mom. No, the, the year before, Quinn had had a terrible migraine, and and he gets sick, and then he passes out right. and goes into this yeah, coma, and we had to take that. him to the yeah. hospital, and it was a little tiny French a hospital on the French side, and mm -hmm. everybody there in the hospital had AIDS, and we were in a ward with six men who That's were dying of AIDS, and no, the French Sally, doctor that's said, that's "This is a pandemic on this mm -hmm. island, and most of the people who get it get it from prostitution." So when Quinn told me what had happened the night before, that's all I could think about. So we did get the cab driver go back to this house of prostitution. The madam looked like it looked like an IBM office. The madam was <laughs> black and pearl. She was totally understanding. She went and fetched the two girls. We took them down to. The, it turned two out it girls. was the place where. Mm. Well, no, there was two well, guys. No, no, no two for guys. me. <laughs> I'm not that lucky. But but there were they, they, they happen, happily it was the place where all of the government officials go so they have well a, then you have that at least. they had a doctor who tested the girls every month right. and so we took the two girls back and had them tested and it was fine 
and and I felt enormously relieved. And um, but is still, that what you really want to tell this it's, audience it's in about? The book, right? It sells books. <laughs> sex, sex sells. What can I say? Yeah. Anyway, so it turned out fine, and and that was more the reason I was hysterical than anything else. Well, that's, Particularly yeah. for having had Quinn have. Uh, twice be told by Children's Hospital because he had had blood transfusions when yeah. he had surgery. We got a letter three years later saying that um, mm -hmm. that a lot of the children had tested positive for AIDS, yeah. HIV. So he had to be tested. And then three yeah. years later, after testing negative, we got another letter saying <coughs> that some of the children who had tested negative had turned up positive, oh. so he had to be tested again. So we've been through that twice right. already. So I was coming from a very different place yeah. than um, but anyway, it all worked out well, it and, out. and as I, you are, here and you as are. I say to Quinn, you know, in the end, it's all material. <laughs> um, you prefer no, the yeah. time. you prefer not to use the word the term learning disabled, but learning different. Yes, um, I'm trying to change the term learning disabled to learning difference. Right. Because uh, learning, well. Learning disabled uh, means that you have trouble learning, and mm -hmm. as I say in my we book, that can that. be about <laughs> anything. Right. So technically, there's no such thing as learning disabled, and everybody has a different way of learning, uh, whether you have learning disabilities or not. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think learning different is a more subtle. Uh, right. And disabled is a pretty harsh word, I think. Uh, another uh, point of language is um, you don't call other kids normal, you call them typical, and that you're not typical. Um, well, I don't, I've never really understood the word normal mm -hmm. because I thought, I've been confused by it my whole life because I thought, you know, everything, before I was diagnosed, everything I was doing was normal. Normal to you, yeah. Um, and then after having, uh, you know, being educated about the definition and the word, I just, I realized in, in theory there's no such thing as normality. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. You're part of a generation where the word retarded is thrown around very randomly yeah. and often not meant that way. What do, you, what, do you, what do you say to people when they use that word in a casual, random way? Um, well, I, have, I just really started working on uh, writing for Friends of Quinn mm -hmm. about how, uh, and sort of doing Friends what Tebby Shriver, com, right? mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing, I just started now doing what Tebby Shriver is, and I've kind of been emailing him back and forth, because he uh, was really the first one banning, trying to ban the word retar retard. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm, you know, working with him a little bit, uh, trying to ban the word retard as well. Timmy is the he runs Special Olympics. Special Olympics, yeah. Yeah. right? But, yeah. but Quinn has been working. Let me do that. Quinn has been working full time <coughs> with this um, with this organization with the, and the website. No, with his website, right. which is Health with Health Central, Central mm -hmm. and it's Quinnsafriend.com, and the whole gang who runs the show it's is sitting over there, here, there. In the corner. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I they, visited the website yeah, quite a lot, yeah. and you're trying to make it sort of a Facebook for the. Uh, LD crowd. Yeah, because on Facebook there's a little, um, and I've never really, I've always had trouble making friends, and I've never, I've always thought of myself as Your doctor as, um, disagreed with you yeah. about that, but I see uh, your point. I've, I've always thought of myself as a lone wolf, kind of, um, and there's, I've never been, on Facebook they have, you know, people who are your number one's friends, and mm -hmm. nobody would ever pick me as their number one's friend. So what I decided to do was to create a website that uh, was a social networking site for it was Everybody's originally designed your one friend. Uh, for young adults mm -hmm. with learning disabilities, but now we have people coming in that are 50 years old, 40 years old, eight years old. So I just said the hell with it. It's for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're close to being out of time. Um, I, I want to come back to you about something, but I wanted to ask your permission to ask your parents two questions that have nothing to do with um, the subject at hand. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, before we get into that, I, okay. I wanted to uh, thank Jeff Himmelman, who's sitting oh, over yeah, there in the red t-shirt, who yes. helped me write my book. Right, yeah. Um, Ken, I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you about something, just journalistically. Um, Washingtonian Magazine really put, recently put Ob Barack Obama on the cover bare-chested. And I thought of, seen it. Yet. You haven't seen it, but have you heard about it? Never heard about it. What do you think about putting the President of the United States in a magazine bare-chested? Well, it's their magazine. 
Uh, yeah, I think okay. it's sort of, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd do it. Uh, I don't quite understand what drove them to do it. It probably is a hell of a picture. I don't know. I didn't see Actually, it. Actually, it's not. It's not. No. no. I mean, I think it was Photoshop. Well, it's sort of silly, I think. Uh, it well. doesn't, uh, I mean, it's it's not terribly daring, and mm -hmm. it's, what, what the hell is it? Yeah. Well, and I don't know if they sell magazines on that. I don't know. I yeah, just, uh, I just, don't I just know. thought it was an interesting journalistic yeah. decision. And as an editor, I was I interested about your opinion. Sally, I have a question for you about Grey Gardens. Uh, yes. um, I heard a story that somebody offered, yeah. that somebody called yeah. you up and offered I, 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 30 I, I, or 50 million dollars, <laughs> well, and I was hoping you'd share the story. Well, it, 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 I don't know whether you know about Grey Gardens, it's a, the movie came out last week and then there was a movie by the Maisel Brothers, and it's a house that we own uh -huh. in Long Island that was owned by Jackie Kennedy's favorite, famous, famous, famous aunt. And famous cousin, strange aunt. Strange. Nutty. Nutty. And it, so it has this fabulous garden and it was a complete wreck and we renovated it 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And and um, and so and I bought it with my book money for two hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars, and and that's how much money I got from the book. So I bought it with, with no the mortgage. complete support from your husband. Uh, well, he's allergic to cats, and there were about fifty-two <laughs> cats in the house at the time. So Ben just kind of didn't get a total 52, 52. Uh, look at the house because he was crying and he couldn't breathe um, <laughs> as he walked in there. Otherwise, but it was. He um, at first he said, "You're out of your mind," but then he got so caught up in the project that we both were consumed by it. It was just so exciting to turn this this wreck into something beautiful, right. make it beautiful again. Um, and so obviously it's gotten worth more and more every year and then and then there it's was the Maisel HBO. Brothers movie and then there was a Broadway musical and mm -hmm. and then the, the recent movie with Jessica Lang and Drew Barrymore and um, but about a year or two ago, every time we'd get an offer on the house, it kept going up and up and up, and Ben would say, sell it, sell it, sell it, and I would say, but yeah, but you know, what difference does it make? We have all this money, and we can't have the house we want. What different, I mean, if you can't buy what you right. want, then what's the point in having the money? And um, so anyway, a, about a year ago, I got a call one morning from this guy, and he said, I have a very serious offer uh, from somebody who wants to buy your house and I said oh, even though I knew I wasn't going to sell it I always want to know what people are willing to pay so I said what is it and he said 60 and I said 60 what and he said 60 million dollars and my heart just sank and I said well let me talk to my husband and I'll get back to you and so I put the phone down and I was almost in tears and I said Ben you won't believe what's just happened somebody's just offered us 60 million dollars for Greg Gardens and I don't know what to do and he said are you again out of your mind of course we're gonna sell Grey Gardens and I said I you know I knew that I couldn't not sell it for 60 million dollars I mean it just seemed so I mean it was so completely over the top but on the other hand I was so depressed all day because I loved this house so much and I just didn't know what to do but in the end I knew I had to do it so finally about 2 30 in the afternoon I got up my courage and I called the guys at a voice shaking and I said this is Sally Quinn and he said, thank God you called me back. I just want to tell you, I'm so sorry, but I got the wrong house. <laughs> and I was so thrilled. I couldn't believe it, you know. <laughs> now, looking now, after the stock market crash, I'm not so sure. <laughs> um, our time is just up, uh, just about up. But since you're, it's your birthday, I wanted to read back something that you wrote on your blog. Um, I think it was just yesterday, perhaps very interesting thing for a young man to write on the eve of his birthday. This is the first time that I have really worked hard at something that I have been waiting to create for so long and after nine long years I am finally done with my book and things are finally falling into place and they are finally happening for me. Uh, just what, tell us just how you feel today on your birthday after all this achievement. Um, well, as my mother describes it, you know, when I was born, before I was born, it was cold and rainy and, you know, all that. And then, when, of course, when I was born, the flowers came out, birds started chirping, blue sky. <laughs> and I look out the window today, I just kind of thought, what's going on? It's, it's, you know, it's not supposed to be like this. And what did I say? Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't oh, I, he said that, and I said, yes, but it, everything is going so beautifully right now that I think this is God's reminder that into each life some rain must fall. 
all. And so we have to, there's a balance in life. <laughs> but I, you know, I always say when it rains, uh, because my mother's family is originally from Ireland, I always say that is the, the Irish are looking down on us. Well, that's a, well Quinn, happy birthday. You have your own Georgetown cupcake. Uh, and uh, and I thought I'd give you a Nathan's t-shirt too. Uh, and. Uh, that work? My my girlfriend Perry, who's sitting over there, yes. actually is uh, also a nutritionist. So I don't know how she's gonna feel. About oh, it's that. your birthday! <laughs> uh, but uh, but I just want to say one. Thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, it 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 really does seem to me, and and Perry has come into Quinn's life in January, and she has changed our whole life and his whole life in the most wonderful in way. Every way. In every way. And he said to me the other day, "I'm happier than I've ever been in my whole life." And um, I just, I just nearly burst into tears. Of it was so great because for the first time in my life, I really think that Quinn can make it on his own, and I'm feeling like I can relax a little bit. But, but may I say in the end, thank you. But you pointed out that even when she's dead, she's going to be taking care of you, right? Well, when she's dead, Perry's going to. Got Perry. And you're just not in the picture. <laughs> well, I thank all three of you very much. It was really terrific. Um, the book is a different life. And Quinn, I'm going to take you out front to sell and sign right. some books. So if you'll all just line up out front, we'll see you out there. Thank you. All right.